Welcome everybody to another build here at Dr. Faust Painting Clinic and today we got a model from a new company Rubicon Models fairly new company they're producing uh, plastic tanks in the 156 scale which perfectly matches for 28 millimeter miniatures so this would be ideal for mainly bolt action I think that's the most popular 28 millimeter World War II game but anything uh, because before I've been using 48, 148 scale, which is a bit too big. And um, it is a, a niche market that there's not too many people making plastic for. Warlord Games does make some plastic tanks. I bought one of those. Really not impressed with their uh, the quality. It was just way, way too simple for me. Uh, and the detail was very limited. But we have the Panther here. You can build the D or the A. And... I actually already have it put together because we're going to concentrate mainly on the painting here. Uh, it is still in a few pieces because we're going to uh, keep it apart as much as possible to make painting a bit easier. But the detail is very nice, much better than the Warlord T-34 that I purchased several months ago. And it's a good blend of detail and ease of build. Uh, tracks are always a pain and you have these nice tracks here that are all one piece molded with the wheels on just like this This is one piece, but then you have the other sets of multiple wheels, which are They're in one piece as well. Basically. This is a three-piece section There's this set of wheels this set of wheels and this set of wheels so it goes together very well because um, They're separated still in three pieces. You still have plenty of detail and you have a lot of extra bits here. I put this together in probably about an hour. So let's jump right into the painting. Now, I'm gonna try something here. Uh, because this is a model for war gamers for playing on the table, not a static display model, I'm gonna try to avoid using the airbrush. So you guys following at home who play miniatures, uh, I'm gonna try to do this so you can follow along easier because war gamers are less likely to have an airbrush and all that expensive equipment. And we're gonna try a somewhat complicated camouflage scheme on this. Nothing broke, it's fine. Uh, so let's jump into it right now. I already got everything primed and uh, we're good to go. So let's hit it. To start off, we begin with an airbrush coat of Vallejo model color green ochre. Yes, I already broke my promise right out of the gate. The thing is, you can use spray paint for this if you don't have an airbrush. Um, unfortunately, I just don't have a lot of spray paint nowadays because I have the airbrush. But uh, doing this for the first step is, is very important because you want a smooth coat to start off with and trying to get all the nooks and crannies uh, with the brush on a tank uh, is a bit difficult. So a spray can for the first coat is perfectly acceptable. After that, we're going for an ambush camo scheme and starting off with the green, which I am using Vallejo model color camo olive green, formerly known as Russian green. Thanks Vallejo for changing paint colors again. But uh, we're putting it on, starting off a bit rough, just kind of get a wavy pattern and then uh, smooth out the edges as we start expanding our rough little wavy lines. And this is not going to be done in one coat because we're going over such a large flat uh, area. It's going to take two to three coats to get everything done. So do it once, let it dry, do it again, let it dry, and if necessary, do it a third time. And as you can see here, as we're working on the third coat, the color is much smoother now, trying to clean up the edges so we have a nice, smooth, even line going all around the tank. The second color in our tri-color camo scheme is Vallejo model color flat brown. And applying this just like with the green, uh, starting off kind of sloppy to begin with, just kind of flushing out where I want the colors and then cleaning them up and widening as necessary when we get to the second and, if necessary, 
third coat. Now with the brown, I am going over the green in some portions. Uh, the goal is to have roughly equal amounts of all three colors. So there's 33% of the green ochre, 30% of the green, and 33% of the flat earth, or excuse me, flat brown. We're done with the main portion of the camouflage colors and all of that would have been a lot easier to do if we were using an airbrush. With an airbrush it could have been done and completed in about 15 minutes. With the brush, it took a couple days. Uh, in total, maybe a couple hours if you're doing it all in one sitting. But we're gonna continue just using the brush here. Next we're adding a dot pattern. At the moment we're just doing it to the brown and the green areas. We're putting a dot pattern of the yellow color we used previously. So this is once again, Vallejo model color green ochre and just dots, dots here, dots there, everywhere. Uh, not filling up the entire area because we're gonna be adding more layers of dots. Um, so just put them wherever you like. Dots, more dots, dots, more dots. After applying those dots, we go back and well, we add even more dots. This time going back to the flat brown and applying it to the yellow and green areas. You know what, I'm just gonna start calling them yellow and green. When I say yellow, I mean green ochre. And when I say green, I mean camo olive green. That's gonna make things a lot easier for me. So once again, just adding more dots, not filling in everything cause yep, we got more to add after this. Can you guess what we're doing now? We're adding squares. No, I'm kidding. We're just adding more dots. This time going with the green and applying that to the brown and the yellow areas. So now in each area, we have the two other colors we used on the tank. Makes sense? Well, that's an ambush camo scheme for you. But uh, you can barely see the tank now, can you? Moving on to the tank accessories, all the tools and the tracks on the tank. And you can skip this step. Uh, historically, when they painted tanks, they usually just painted right over the tools and stuff on the tank. They didn't take everything off and then paint it. But uh, when we have a, especially when we have a really complicated scheme like this, I really want the tools not to get lost in the camo. I wanna add a little bit more color and detail to it. So for the wood bits, we're painting those with Vallejo Panzer Aces New Wood. And then for the metal bits, painting that with Vallejo Model Air Steel mixed with a little bit of Vallejo Panzer Aces Dark Rust because we really don't want a bright steel. They're not stainless steel polished tools they're used. So darker colors, with a little bit of earth mixed in work very well. Painting the rubber on the road wheels is one of the things I really hate about tanks, but uh, has to be done. And we're painting that with Vallejo Panzer Aces track primer, which is a, a gray paint. It has a little bit of brown in it. Uh, now, if we were using the airbrush on this project, I would paint the entire wheel, the rubber color, and then use a circle template to paint the center of the wheels themselves. Uh, without that, we're just reduced to trying to be very careful painting the outside of the wheel and then going back if necessary and cleaning up the inside. For the tracks, I am going with Vallejo Panzer Aces Dark Rust, applied very heavily with an older brush with all the texture here, we don't want to use a new brush, it'll just ruin it. But uh, a very dark reddish brown. Uh, again, much like with the tools, tracks, they are metal, they are steel, but they're not polished steel, they're not going to be shiny. Don't make the mistake of painting them silver. Uh, we'll add a little bit of metal sheen to them later. But uh, stick with, I personally like brown, some people go with grays, but uh, I just prefer the brown color instead. Before moving on to weathering the tank, we need to protect the underlying layers of paint. 
So we are covering it with a coat of Pledge Floor Care. And that is a acrylic clear gloss for your uh, wood or tile floors. And uh, basically it's just an, a gloss acrylic. It's cheaper if you buy it this way. But uh, normally would apply this once again, yes, with an airbrush. Yes, with the airbrush, it would be a lot easier. It would take us about 30 seconds. Um, using the brush, not quite as easy. Uh, you have to get into all those nooks and crannies. And also, uh, brush strokes do present a slight problem. But uh, we're not using the airbrush anymore. We're going to get it done this way. <laughs> 